my tips. Welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing another video request. I've gotten a bunch of requests and I honestly feel sorry because I got them piled up in my queue. So I'm trying to get rid of as many requests as possible so that I can help you with the, the questions that you have. So in this video, we're going to address this comment by Stuart Poole. 7022 and he says could you do a video tutorial on Ombi? I have tried in to install it in Synology but I am no closer to getting it to work. So let's go ahead and address this request. I was looking at Ombi and Ombi uh, they have a github repository so it's ombi-app slash Ombi and when you come here you see that it's an application that is written mainly in C sharp, a little bit of TypeScript, has 122 contributors. If you look at the application, it basically it's like a, an alternative to Overseer. We already covered Overseer. It's a way for you to allow people to place requests for media to be downloaded by your Rs. This is a request tool and it syncs to your media servers. It's a good community that allows you to request features here directly on the readme file. And here it talks about all the features that the OMB application has. So it basically lets you request movies, so that's radar, music, so that's LIDAR, and TV shows, so that's probably anime and TV shows, so that would be sonar. And it says it can be, you know, a whole series, a season, or even single episodes that can be requested. You have an easy way to manage those requests. It allows you to create users and specify users that automatically get approved and it says that uh, they also allow you to manage those users uh, using several ways and it has a landing page that gives you the availability on your Plex and MB server and it allows you to uh, push custom notifications to your users. Secure authentication. If somebody requests something that is already in Plex, it just lets them know uh, that it's, it's already been requested and it automatically updates the status of request and it's a nice responsive user interface. They have an installation guide. When you click there, it takes you to the documentation and that's pretty simple for their GitHub repository. So if we go into that uh, installation guide, then we see examples here where it tells us that you can install that using Windows. You can install it also on Linux systems. And it says that they don't actually manage a Docker image, but they recommend you use the uh, Linux server image. So that's what we're going to use here in this case. That's going to be in the Docker hub slash Linux server slash Ombi. As usual, Linux server always updates their images all the time. So we can see here, this is one hour ago that it was updated. If we scroll down, we can see details about it. And the important thing that we want here is we have an image available for us. If you're running on an Intel processor, it's available also for Raspberry Pi is available and other ARM versions. So that's really nice. And they have the latest tag and the development tag. We're gonna be using the latest for this. So here's the important thing. We have an example of a Docker Compose file that we can use to deploy this. So we're gonna copy this because that's what we're gonna use in our Synology NAS to deploy this application. Here it gives us information about those details that we specify here in the Docker Compose file. So it says that the P is the port for the web user interface. The PUID is the user, PGID is the group. TZ is the time zone. The base URL is a subfolder that can be defined for reverse proxies. It's really not really necessary for us. Config is where we're going to put our configuration files. And if we want to run the container as read only, we can put that. But that's not going to be the case for us. We're going to go with this and we're going to make some changes to that. So let's go into our NAS. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a project folder for our Docker Compose file that we're going to be creating here. So let's create a subfolder here and we're going to name it Ombi. And once we have that, that's perfect. And then for the configs, we're going to do the same. We're going to create a folder named Ombi. And now we have Ombi there, hold our configuration files. And that's going to be basically it when it comes to the files that we need to do. Next, we're going to go here into the container manager. And in container manager, we're going to go into project because we're going to be using a Docker Compose file. So we're going to create a new project and we're, I'm going to call it Ombi and I'm going to say that I'm going to store that in the Docker projects Ombi and then I say I want to create a Docker Compose. I'm going to paste the contents that we found in the Linux server Docker Hub page. 
so that is perfect we have that in here and we're gonna make the changes now that we need oh I remember lowercase I keep on making that mistake so now this is using another container registry it's not using the docker hub one so I'm going to remove that and I'm going to set it up like as the repository and the package. So that's perfect. And then latest is the tag. So that looks correct. And then I'm going to name this container Ombi. So that's why I put container name Ombi. And then here for the environment variables, I'm going to put 1026 as the user and 100 as the group. Remember, that's the default administrator account that you create the first time when you set up your Synology NAS. And then for the time zone, in my case, I'm going to put America New York, you put the one that is right for you. And then this is optional, so I'm gonna remove it. Then here we have to put the path to that config folder that we created, and that's gonna be mapped in the container into the slash config. So let's look for that path and then put it here. So we go into file station, we look for the config location, so it's here, and then we see ombi, right click properties, and here's the path that we need to put. We copy this, that should be the path that we use. In my case, my volume is lowercase volume one, and then Docker is a folder, and then Configs is a subfolder, and then Ombi is a subfolder there. And then that's gonna be our slash config in the container. And then for the port, remember that this is exposing on the left side and container on the right side. So the container is listed on 3579, and then we're gonna use uh, 8076 because I believe I used 8077 on the last video so that's going to be how we reach that application and uh, restart unless stopped we can leave it like that and then we can say next and then we're not going to do anything here so next and then we are going to start the project so let's leave that checked and uh, press done and then it's going to pull that image and then once it pulls that image it extracts all those layers that it downloads and then it's gonna create our container. So let's give it time because the pulling usually takes a little bit of time. I'll be back when that part is done. So now it says that the pull is complete and it, it is extracting the contents of the layers that it downloaded. All right, it has finished uh, extracting everything and now it's creating that container and starting that container and making sure that everything is running properly. If we get an exit zero message at the end, it means that it was successful. And then we should get a pop-up on the right side here, a notification letting us know that the project was successfully built. So we're gonna wait for that. All right, here's the exit code zero and here's the notification popping up. So now we're good. We should have that container running in there and it should be good to test it out and see if it's working properly. We can go here to Ombi, click on log and then we'll follow the logs to make sure that everything is working properly until it stops making changes. So it looks like it's setting itself up and I'm not seeing more updates. So it's likely then that it has finished. So let's try to go into the IP of the NAS and then on port 8076 for Ombi. All right, we receive the wizard page here for Ombi. So it's basically telling us that we have to follow five steps to set the server up. The, let's go ahead and click next here. It says we have to connect Plex. So in this case, we would have to put our Plex credentials here. We can either put the username and the password or we can say login with Plex. So whichever you want, I'm going to go and click on login with Plex and be right back after that's done. All right. So it tells me that I have logged in and I can close this. And then here for some reason hasn't updated. Let's say, okay, didn't complain. So let's just say next. And then it says we have to create an admin account for Ombi. So in my case for the video, I'm going to say Ombi and the password is going to be password for the sake of the video. And then we need to customize the application. Okay. It's just, this part says it's optional. So I'm just going to leave it blank next. And then it says everything is set up for uh, press finish. Now let's do Ombi password and sign in and there we go. Now we're inside Ombi and we have our basic interface for the application and it's pretty nice because it gives us here a search bar where we can look for something here. So let's say one Deadpool and we search there and it'll filter everything down to, you know, movies about Deadpool, including the latest one. So that's really nice, it works very well. And let's go into this cover again. It gives us genre so we can filter stuff out based on what we want to see. If it's animation, for example, or action movies, etc., we can do that here. And then it gives us a suggestion 
of popular things. In this case, we have we are combined, but let's say we want to see only movies. We click here, and we only see the popular movies. If we click on TV, then it'll it'll show us the TV series. So that's perfect. And then trending is based on the users data so uh this is what people are basically requesting and getting and we can see again for movies and tv or combined so that works perfectly and then upcoming just like with overseer anything that is coming up that hasn't been released yet shows up in here and you can filter here for things that you might be interested in so that's nice the home page is pretty good then the request section is where we see anything that has been requested and then in here i can manage them so you have the filters here of pending stuff, things that are processing, things that are available, and things that have been denied for movies and TV shows. Currently, there's nothing, so that's good. And then users, here's where we manage our users. This is the administrator user that we created. So if we want to create other users, so we allow other people to place requests, we use the add user button and we set all of this up. I'm not going to do it. That's up to you. It's what, what you need to do with your interface, but this is where you do that. And then if you want to donate to the creators of Ombi, Here's the option, you click on that link, takes you to the PayPal option to donate. Then the features basically takes you to the documentation, letting you know about features that have been suggested for Ombi and how things are going. So that's very good, it keeps you updated on the things that are going on on the application development. And then on settings, here's where we set all the stuff up. This is basically about information of the application. If we click on configuration, then we have all the stuff about configuration. So the general configuration is here talks about the base URL. In this case, it's blank. I didn't specify it. Here's the API key if you need it later to connect it to something. Toggles that you can use to make changes to how it behaves. Media server. Here's how you connect your applications. So you can enable, for example, Plex here. You have all the toggles here for the watch list and uh, user watch list requests. And then you put the credentials for your Plex here. And then you connect to it. And then that'll allow you to sync the data uh, to Plex, so that's uh, really good too. You can do that. I'm not gonna do it right now. This is just giving you a, a brief overview of what you can do. And here again, you got the same for MB if you have an MB server and Jellyfin if you have a Jellyfin server. So that's the players. So Plex or MB or Jellyfin is what you use to play the content. And then for the TV stuff, you have several options. You have Sonar, you have Dog NZB, and Sick Rage as the options that you can configure. So in our case, we've been working with Sonar, so you'd go into Sonar and then configure everything here. I'm not gonna go about it, but basically you put the host and I uh, like the IP and the port here, and then the API key and the base URL if you have any. And then you can uh, also configure here the profiles that you're syncing with uh, the application and test it and submit that change. Then for movies, we got Cash Potato, we got Dog NZB, and we got Radar. In our case, we have been using Radar, so go into Radar, enable it, look uh, for the toggles that you want to apply, put the IP, put the port, the API key, and test that it works and submit and make changes that you want in here if you want. And then for music would be LiDAR in this case. So you go into LiDAR, do the same IP, port, API key, test and submit. And once you have configured all that, then you'll have it available within Ombi to submit those requests to those applications. When it comes to notifications, here you have a bunch of options to send you notifications from Ombi. So you can set emails, for example, mobile, you can have Discord notifications, Slack, etc. There's a bunch of options here for you. And if you go into system, then you have information about the application. Then you have any failed requests showed up here. The tasks that are scheduled, you can manage them here using the cron syntax. And we have also the logs for the application. So that's basically all that you have in the application. I wasn't going to configure everything. I just wanted to let you know how you set up the container and then you do the rest. The rest is pretty straightforward. Then when you're going to submit a request, let's say I want to download the Inside Out movie. I go into request. And then I, I put the user that I want to submit that request as and then request it. And then when we go into the request, we should see that request coming up here. And then if you had connected that to the Rs, then that request would be submitted to the Rs for it to pull that information from the Internet. You can see that the request was here. Basically, you have options here to deny it, to approve it, etc. So I'm going to delete the request because it's irrelevant for me, but that's just showing an example. Remember, you can always do like you did with Overseer. So you can say, for example, all the requests that are submitted by X user are automatically approved. So that should work very similar to the Overseer case. But just go into the documentation. That's pretty uh, easy to set up. I'm not going to 
go over that in the video because the video as it is is too long so this is gonna be it how do you set up the ombi container in a Synology NAS and configure the application and how kind of a short glimpse of how to use it I hope you like it remember if you like the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so and you'll find the videos to be helpful share the videos with other people that you think might benefit from watching the videos and remember I am not monetizing this channel I am not making any money out of YouTube ads and as far as I know there should not be any ads on my videos so I rely entirely on your support so if you want to help me to continue to create content of good quality for you like this feel free to donate using the link in the description below through paypal or using the bitcoin address that'll really help me out to focus on the channel 